Welcome back. We are, this is a pre recorded show, and uh, we want to tell you guys uh, happy holidays and all this other good stuff. And uh, what we're going to talk to you about tonight is several different subjects, and we'll see you when we get back. All right, so tonight, uh, like I said, this is a pre recorded show, and the first person we want to thank is our sponsors. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, we're uh, in the process of getting our training schedule up for this next year, 2023. Three. Hopefully, it won't be our last year in existence, Ooh. you know? But uh, type in saberteamtactical.com, go to the top right hand corner, and um, we'll go from there. And, uh, Go ahead, Al. Yes, yeah, click it, and then the uh, classes will pop up. We might have to click it. There you go. Yeah. And then once the classes pop up, you'll see an assortment, and this is what it'll look like. Um, I'm basic and uh, mainstay, should I say, is our private one-on-one -on -one classes. We speed. Uh, we do assessments, and we from that and keep on moving. Um, we also work on your um, a dry fire pro program that's coming to new to 2003, 2023. Um, we're going to start working on dry firing and um, groups phases so that we'll meet more than once. You just can't get this in one setting. It is not possible. So we're working on that for the new year. Yeah. And um, uh, we no longer have the online store. I shut that down uh, as of yesterday. Uh but you can go to the about page, read our history, read about us. You can go to, we got some videos and stuff up, and also you can contact to us. Uh, it's going to probably be some changes to his website coming up in 2023, especially on the classes and uh, on how it looks and uh, things of that nature. And um, 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 so it's going to be some new additions I'm getting ready to start doing for the classes itself. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, Innovation. And, and yeah, and it's taking a look. I was looking at the website, and there's uh, uh, quite a few things I can do setting up the classes and stuff, the way we talked about. And mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to um, do something like that. Also, I'm going to put up a page for the laser engraving on there, too. And uh, so you guys can. I'm going to push that side of the company. And uh, so it'll be on the, on the page. Uh, and uh and go from there and uh let's see what happens you know yeah. what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah i got nothing to lose except make money you know there it is yeah and um but if you guys still wanted to get some body armor while well, still got the vendors uh uh chest rigs and stuff uh let me know um and uh, medical supplies like uh um, Israeli Turnicates. bandages and tourniquets and stuff so mm -hmm. we can still get that stuff I still have those two vendors still in my pocket for right now and uh, let's go with the show uh, yep. let's talk about what happened here in Georgia and uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, my god uh, what a disaster <laughs> yeah. what a disaster we had Herschel Walker running with uh, Warlock and Warnock and uh and um herschel walker lost the first race by two percent and it was uh the um independents well, well, you know, they also had that third guy i don't remember well, that, him. yeah i'm saying he sucked the, up the, the first time right yeah he sucked up to two percent so with they, they, he was an independent runner so everybody could thought those people were independents they wouldn't vote for neither one of them and uh However, Herschel Walker lost the second time by 2%. How do you lose a race by the same percentage value? That means this guy did not campaign. He took five days off after the uh, original campaign, the original yeah. election. And talking about vampires and all types of other stuff. <laughs> that it's bull. Like, Don't forget that bull. He never told oh, us what he never told us what the bull was doing, but right. the bull story. talking about the bull. You know what I'm saying? I was like, dude, what the hell? You know but, what what is I don't know the guy's name, but the guy Fetterman, is that the guy from Pennsylvania? When I looked at it, I looked at it as 
the Republicans had Herschel, the Democrats had Fetterman. Fetterman mm-hmm. won because he was going against Oz. Mm-hmm. And Oz against- was, he just, dude, people are recognizing this, all right? Now, I'm going to give a, like, a correlation here. Hillary Clinton is the first one that I remember doing it. She moved from Arkansas to New York to, because there was an open Senate seat, ran for Senate, and won because it's a liberal town, and they, they love her there. So she won. Herschel Walker leaves Texas, moves back to Georgia to run for Senate. Um, Oz leaves New Jersey, runs to Pennsylvania to become a senator. Right. He could still he couldn't pronounce the local towns of Pennsylvania. That's the ridiculous, dude bro. Was still a Turkish citizen. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even a citizen of the United States. They said you're gonna have to denounce your Turkish citizenship in order to be a be a senator in order to get security clearance. Dude. And and he and he acted like he didn't want to do it. So it's like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you would think somebody did a five dollar bet and say, I bet you won't run for a uh, senator. Watch. But the me. thing but the thing of it is, these cats, man, I mean, and also too, I blame Herschel Walker loss on the Republican Party because the Republican Party did not give that man a hundred percent support until what two weeks right. <laughs> before yep. the no, at the end when they bought their fourteen the million dollars in. Yes. It was it's already like, over. Yeah. They mm-hmm. the Republican Party will not go out and campaign in the black communities. And Herschel Walker's black. Right. Why didn't he go in the black community and try to talk to these people? These people were waiting. They were sitting there waiting mm-hmm. on him. But the only thing he did was go to the white rural areas. And he didn't even go back to the white rural areas when he was running for the runoff. Right. He, he, he didn't because he, he, he stayed. He did hit it at the end, but it was like too, way too late. The very day of the runoff, he wound up down in the um, was it the southern part of Georgia and mm-hmm. the out the I think it was southwest southwest part He's, of Georgia. He should have been on the campaign trail going hard, hard, mm-hmm. hard. He thought it was a shoe in. Right. Yeah, it's true. He thought he was going to just. I guess oh, he was counting the people this. in his head that said they would vote for him. And he's like, that's one million. <laughs> oh, and the thing of it is, it's like the RNC should have stepped in and said, no, you're going to do this. This is what you're going to do. Well, you know, that's a thing that I was listening to some of the um, uh, professionals who do this consulting people. And they one of the things they said is that if you have a. Um, uh, a, uh, a candidate who listens, you can kind of, you know, spoon feed them or carrot in front, carrot in a stick type thing mm-hmm. to move them forward. But sometimes you get a, a candidate, sim similar as, as what they said Herschel was, who had his own ideas and he's never done this before. But there were exactly. things that he wanted to do his way, but he's never done right. this before, and he was going to do it that way. So they kind of had to, you know, get in, get in line and and but, follow him but, to the demise. But if he, if that's the case. And he lost by 2%, which is not bad, okay? But he made some fatal errors and fatal mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about the black vote. Dude, do you know, you know me, I'll say anything to start an argument, right? There were people who are Facebook, black folks, who were totally against Warnock. That said Mm -hmm. they had 100% um, uh, effort going towards um Herschel. Herschel Walker. Yeah. And yet these people he never reached out to them. He never but reached they, out they, to but them. he but he they had he had them in his pocket. He had their back. Yeah, they, they had, they his, had back. his back. But and he, he never, never reached, reached out. out. To and them. that's one of the things I said to the guy because you know I, I don't give a damn about none of this stuff. I'm right. going on and 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 he's an older guy. He's in his, in his uh, mid sixties, and we're you know going back and forth. And I, I just asked him. I said, well, "What do you see?" He said that Herschel represents his um, ideals and what he sees in the future. And I said, "I understand that." I said, Most do- black Christians are conservative. Conservative, right? And that's yeah. what that's what it came down to. And I was I was yeah. explaining to him. And I said, "Well, you do understand that." Except the women. What about the guy? <laughs> Yeah. What about the fact that, you know, he has a hard time putting sentences together? I said, don't you think that he should be working on that? Don't you think that he should I, that he should I be can, more polished? I contribute point? that to his football days. I think he has some brain trauma that that because of his football. You okay. know what I'm saying? I just mentioned a dude's name and I probably have brain trauma now after listening to you say that. But the dude that won in Pennsylvania had a stroke, bro. He could barely talk and they reelected his ass. I know. They reelected him. 
Yeah. He can, he he I seen some of the stuff he did and he yeah. started talking about birds and the bees when they were on alligators and octopus. He couldn't even read the teleprompter. But the yes. thing of it is and they reelected the him. Of, the thing of it is you're going Democrats to Go know how to no, 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 I'm not going to say that. No, I'm no, I'm going to tell you the reason is that dude had, prof- he had a background in politics. He had a handlers. No, he, he had a background. He had already been a politician in oh, the he was a, he was before a he had a stroke. So the right. people recognized him. This dude, Herschel, came out of nowhere. He nowhere. never volunteered, he to, helped nobody. He had to prove himself. Yes, what, that's my point. He did not prove himself at all. Mm-hmm. However, too, Democrats know how to fight. They know how to run a campaign. They will throw dirt on the wall and enough of it on the wall until it's something's going to stick. And they're going to come out with something every day. Republicans that sit back, they don't fight dirty. They don't know how to fight dirty. Even if they're told and shown how to fight dirty with Trump, what's happening in the Republican Party, you have the old guard, you have the new guard in there. And the old guard is still trying to take over and control things when the new guard is saying no we don't want to be that way. We want to be just as dirty and fight just as hard as the Democratic Party and take over when. Prime example, look what happened in California. California, the Democrats was beating Republicans year after year. So what the Republican Party did in California, they learned how to fight, how to ballot harvest, how to do everything that the Democrats was doing, and they held and won all the Republican seats and held them after this election. And so they're actually, uh, conservatives are coming back in California. They just got to get the governorship and and the local mayors. But uh, I don't have my... um my fake badge, but I have this to show you. I'm a, police, I'm a police officer. I'm a real police officer. I'm a, I'm a real police officer. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. He never should have done that. He never should have done it. You know? <laughs> he never should have done it. No, nope. you know but, but, it, but that's the thing that you can see when you look at the, the whole program and the way that they went around the I strategy, don't, don't, that he went out on his own because you, can, you know damn I, well dude, that a handler would not have told him to do that. I don't think he took this serious enough. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I don't really mm. think he took this serious. I think enough. he thought since he's Georgia's son that he can come back from Texas and he would be a shoe in. Mm-hmm. Because and he had the blessing from Trump. One guy. He matter of fact, your guy, your guy, your guy, one of your who? boys. I'm not gonna say no names. I'll tell you later when we get off. You know who? He said the reason why he's voting for Herschel is because Coach Dooley, before he died, said make Herschel Walker a senator, and I said. Who said that? Uh, You're taking the word of a man that was probably senile before he passed away. He was a great man 30 years ago. He was an old man before he died. And just because he said make Herschel a senator, you voted for him? Dude, we had... Check it out. First, we had that dude who was going to be a Democrat. Who was a I'm a lifelong Democrat. What was his name? I'm a lifelong Democrat. He was like, I'm running for senator and stuff. He didn't get the blessing. Oh, you know, the black dude. I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the black dude. And, oh, I, and, I, and all these folks was coming out here, and I met a bunch of them. I met the guy. Took yeah, you when you took a picture with him. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, I was like, and I kept telling these folks, I don't trust this guy. I don't know right. if I can vote for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then he Damn. didn't get the... He didn't it's get not the, Johnson. It's um, um, I know he's talking about his, his yeah, district yeah. is um, he's got a big one and and they moved him out of that and yeah. instead of running for senator, he wound up running for he's got another position right now. Yeah, he was gonna run for governor even. It was like right. man, no, no hell, you ain't. Right. You know, I mean, come on, you're a lifelong Democrat. You but know, at what least saying? he has a background in politics, bro. Yeah, the wrong type. Well, you yeah, know, what he, I'm he, he's he's got some. Uh, tainted hands too and some stains mm-hmm. on his hand, I don't right? want a lifelong Democrat. Right. You know, keep saying that. Why don't he get up there and say the damn what the Democrats <laughs> talk against them. The damn the Democrats. Tell some dirt on them. Right. You know, then I can trust you. Mm-hmm. You know, but he was like he was just gonna he was gonna be a rhino. He was just gonna be a Republican, then get up there. He was gonna be like Joe Manchin and get mm-hmm. up there and or uh not Joe Manchin, what's the dude from Utah? Uh and be a Republican, but vote Democrat the whole time. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was like, right. come on, man. It made, it, he going to say it makes it made sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. But we didn't need nobody like that. So right. Herschel Walker was our last step. However, we don't have Herschel Walker. Now, what happened lately this week, today in the Senate, was one of the senators, uh, she uh, denounced 
her um uh party. she did she announced her party, party and became an independent. Yeah. So we thought it was going to be what uh, fifty forty nine. Right now it's, it's it was going to be fifty one fifty one forty nine. So it's now it's forty nine one independent. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's tied. So the vice president cannot step in It'd be a tiebreaker. So she has to sway on either or, mm-hmm. and and if Joe Manchin goes over to the other side they're screwed right you know what i'm saying because mm-hmm. he everybody knows he votes with the republicans too right and uh so but if he votes on that side and and, and that's one thing you might be right hr 1808 he might not vote for it right and I, I was just about to bring that up yeah. as my next topic because yeah. H- a- that's our main uh, thrust and, and concern right now mm-hmm. you know the rest of this stuff will fall in place you know most of the people right. who, who watch this show you know we go out and work every day and, and you, you provide for your family in the best way you can so you're not looking for a handout from the government but on the other side you want to maintain your you know not a privilege but a right and we don't want to pay more money we're already paying $200 for a damn tax stamp to put a stinking ass uh, a muzzle on the damn gun that's all it is you know basically mm-hmm. suppressor. but still yeah. You already, people are already paying money for things that for it's not it doesn't even enhance it you know but right. I mean I'll digest. No, you ain't got to digest. Once you once I'm, you, I'm gonna digress and I'm not gonna digest. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to say that, but you ain't got to digress. But I'm just saying once and a lot of people don't realize once they put that tax stamp mm-hmm. for that can on there and they make that gun the serial number item for that can when they want that can they take in that gun too. Right. Yeah, yep. and, and then that's the thing that people don't recognize, and especially that other one with the uh, take a picture and we, we'll give you amnesty. You don't oh, have to yeah. pay for it. Take a picture oh, of your gun. Uh, oh, we talking along about the brace. With the, uh, brace. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about HR eighteen oh eight mm-hmm. first. Right, then but we'll but on. it it kind of all goes together because at this point, if you if we get to a point where um, Biden has enough people and Bloom what's the dude's name Bloomberg Bloomberg, Bloomberg yeah. is that's who's pushing, pushing all of this stuff. They're when, pushing. If you if they get to a certain point where they have enough votes for it, they're definitely gonna go for it. And we talk, mm-hmm. they talk at this point they're gonna gut the Second Amendment. Yeah, if they don't have the votes right now, and from what well, I've been reading and what you've been saying, they don't have the votes. But I guarantee you, um, by January first session, mm-hmm. they're looking to put HR eighteen oh eight because you what you listening to, if you watch this president, what he been saying, he wants gun control. He wants mm-hmm. gun control. Every time you're seeing him on TV, he's yelling, I want gun control. I'm gonna take everybody's guns. He knows eighteen oh eight is sitting in the Senate. Now only thing he needs is a momentum to push it. So how are they gonna push it? Guarantee you we're gonna have a Christmas shooting or a New Year's massacre something is going to take place that will push that thing over just like they did when they had uh um uh, sandy hook mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yep. something is going to push it over it is and you're absolutely right i think that's what's going to happen and we watch this all the time as we as anytime some type of mass incident happens all of a sudden you start hearing more about sensible gun control people who don't own guns say things like oh it's sensible gun control People who mm-hmm. own guns go, you're controlling me, and I am a legal citizen. I'm not talking right. about you know the dude in the alley right now with a with a gun in his in his waistband. I'm not talking about uh, you know criminals out there doing crime with guns. I'm talking about the person and the people who follow the Second Amendment, who are proponents of the Second Amendment, who want to continue uh, seeing the Second Amendment around. We follow, we pay our uh, dues, we pay um, what is these things fees in order to to have the right to carry a gun. Um, the, the, all, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no those, those say, things. Only, are, those are the things that that um, what we're talking about that they don't understand because what you and the individual right. out there you have to do is talk to people who don't own guns. And let me let me say it in the, <laughs> down to the people's level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only them. thing a sensible gun control does is hinder honest blood. Red, white, and blue citizens. Mm-hmm. It only hinders them from protecting themselves. And we got a bunch of jackleg preachers going up to Washington, D.C. Let me pull this up. Hey, Are you they guys going to Washington? This. Are they going to Washington? Or no, is I think they're going, they're going to be right here in Georgia. 
somewhere out here in Georgia. I wish I had the time to go out there and yell at them fools. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these are some these are some serious, stupid people right here. These guys are sitting up here want to and they black black clergy clergy. They're going to Georgia State Capitol this weekend. Yeah. Look at this. You know? Mm-hmm. They want to go out there and uh talk about uh Talk about uh, uh, constitutional carry. Constitutional carry. Constitutional carry is killing black kids in Georgia. Now, they're basically trying to blame this on the shooting that we had in Centennial Park when you had uh, what was it, twelve, thirteen? No, that was on Seventeenth Street Bridge and Atlantic Station. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Atlantic Station. Okay, it was a twelve-year-old and a fifteen-year-old. Yeah, sorry these kids had to yeah. die like that, but they shouldn't have been out in the street. They were, you know and saying? both of them were involved in gangs. Yeah, both involved in gangs. The the kid who shot him was a kid, yep. so you know 15. he didn't go to a gun store and buy his gun. Right. So what does that have to do with gun control or constitutional carry? With this, he wasn't. Right. Yeah, he going. wasn't legal to carry. It. He wasn't mm-hmm. even legal to possess it. You know, but they're blaming everything on guns except for the parents of these two children who allowed their kids to be out in the street. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then what I said to you earlier, the, the one parent, she's on, on video saying that she contacted the government and 30 calling the police and, and trying to get them to take this child. And mm-hmm. that's not how it works. You know, no. you, they don't just come. That's a, that's something that came out, I think, in the 40s and the 50s. And they come and uh, you make a child a ward yeah, of the state. Tro- you, you got to go petition the courts at this point. You yeah. got to you got to do something a little extra. You got to go down Dude, to the courthouse yourself. Nobody told her to lay her big ass legs open and have to get pregnant. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you want gun control, you got to do first thing. You got to do is do celibacy and take care of your business. There's all <laughs> types of birth control for these chicks, man. It's like, come on. Well, now. Wait a minute. It's illegal in the state of Georgia now. I said what? Abortion. What? Abortion. You can go across the damn to another state. You know what I'm saying? What about they can't afford a a, a plane ticket? No, you don't have to get an abortion. You can work. They got 90, was it 90, 90, 90 different forms of birth control for women. So that's that's be that's before the fact. You think they think it before it's all hot and heavy. And hold on, let me get this out. (sighs) What? Come on, they, man. They, they say, Stop. If you can't do self control, why are you producing to have children that you can't control? Bro, you, can't you know, even you know to... just like I know. When you start on, looking man. at some of these these pieces, you see one lady with seven children. Come on, man. I yeah, mean, each one it, by a different dad. Each maybe one. so, but I mean, at no, the same no time, so this is what it is, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, I, what my point is on what my it point is what on that is. is these little dudes out here, and they're trying to be Look. men. Right. And I had this discussion yeah. with an old schoolmate of mine. And I was saying one of the things that I've been preaching since about 1999 when I was uh, doing police work and standing in front of uh, the county commission in um, uh, Prince George's County. And I would tell them the biggest thing that I see with these kids need is conflict resolution. They need the skills to be able to c- c- have a conflict. You and I debate all the time. We, n- we ain't never throw no punches at each other. At no, one time, you threw a miss, but, you know. I and- threw, <laughs> what? <laughs> I would throw an apple at you one of these days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, but but the thing, is, and you, the same as with the, with other people that we know. We've had debates with with people. We, we, we talk and we may get upset, but we don't go to the, oh, I got to shoot no, this no, dude no. now. No. These no. guys, I'm going to tell you, these guys, these young people, well, hold on. They're on the street and they understand, right? Yeah, but that if every time I see this guy, I'm gonna have to fight him. They're gonna resolve it by killing that person, and you, that's then because it's absolutely these, resolved. These single parents, mm-hmm. single mothers, are raising these young monsters. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're, nothing, they're being raised by the street. And you know what the street and, taught me? You know what the street taught me? And I'm sure you 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 can relate to this. The street taught me if somebody hit you, you hit them back harder. Right, some, but see, it, these young men today ain't built like that. They're emotional, and they and and this is not this is this is society doing this. I'm gonna it's beg so, to differ, and I'm, society, I'm gonna hold my finger up so I can remember society, my society. Well, you're a man, and you're your two parent home. And it makes a difference mm-hmm. when you get a single parent home. What do they always want? 
they ended up making these young men soft. Oh, I you totally make, agree. I totally you agree. You make a young yeah. man soft. There's and not only they're soft, more. they get emotionally attached, and they and don't know how to discern themselves from their emotions. That's why I say take one dangerous. of these math classes away from them and start teaching these young men conflict resolution. Yeah, you, yeah they, 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 they're going to cry. Because I'm not talking you, about the harsh stuff. I'm talking about being able to debate the same way where you don't like something. You say green, I say blue. And then we dude, discuss why green's better than blue and vice versa. dangerous men. Uh, the most dangerous man there is, it is an emotional man. I agree. And, and so, and you look at all these cats in prison, they're all emotional men. Mm-hmm. You know, you step. Then what are they? They got the space. They step on the shoes and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and they ready to fight and, and kill each other. But and that's what we're raising. We've been doing this since the seventies. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say it's decades, bro. Yeah, we've been doing this since the seventies, raising these emotional men. Mm-hmm. And so now these guys, they get out there. They don't know how to compartmentalize their their emotions, and uh, and they they act like women and and want to fight. Yep. And they take it to a double level because mm-hmm. these guys have rage right. and rage is, you know, it's something that is dangerous. I mean, mm-hmm. our testosterone level goes up to what? 300. Right. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. And, but this is what I'm saying to you. When you, re- you let a child be raised by the street, you now have somebody who's learning things that if you draw a gun, you better shoot somebody. Right. That's wrong. If you if somebody hits you, you better hit them back harder and keep hitting them till they can't hit you back at all, destroying somebody. So when these kids hit, hear this thing, and evolution comes along, right? The invention well, of the gun, the invention of the fifth, the ten round magazine, fifteen rounds. Some of these cats run around thirty three round in one damn gun, in a pistol. Well, that is the absolute problem solver. But well, what do we have help pushing that level of uh, of stupidity and rage? Rap music. You know, these these rappers today, they're not talking about just women or whatever. They're talking about. You murder. understand what they're, they're saying? About, no, I don't have no idea what they're saying. I have no idea what the. Yeah, I, I mean, I, but I, if it ain't, if you, anything I before 99, I don't car, understand. And they're all sitting there bobbing their head like they know what's going on. To me, it sounds like a dude whining. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he ain't even rapping. He's whining. And uh, these dudes are listening to it, yeah. but they're talking about murder. You know, and the drugs. ATF. And drugs. drugs. You know, the FBI mm-hmm. is using their rap lyrics to prosecute mm-hmm. these guys. They, they did. They, they, some group in, in Atlanta was actually um, using their real life adventures on, <laughs> in their, the rap music. on their rap song on their, as yeah. their lyrics. Mm-hmm. And they just put, look, I'm going to tell you right now worked around some of the greatest detectives of, of all when you see colombo it's that this how it really is you got a guy who looks at one piece of paper looks at another piece of paper puts the two pieces of paper together and then realizes they got a clue you can't see mm-hmm. it yet, then yeah, he realizes yeah. they have a clue these guys walk up walk past things for months then just happen to look back at it again and go i ain't there some and put it together mm-hmm. it's because they're relentless yeah. Detectives, good detectives are relentless. They may not get it right away. They may not get it tomorrow, but down the line you're gonna have a warrant. Their goal on your is ass. to put crooks in jail. Yes, yeah. that's, that's and, that's and good they're good at it. And they're good at it. They're not, I'm gonna say all of them are good. Even There's if you're out innocent. There workers, but <laughs> even if you're innocent, they're gonna put you in jail. <laughs> well you're talking about the the feds now. The feds, yeah. they're gonna do it. Feds. They'll take it three years to put one person in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Thirteen they, million dollars later. But that's what it's coming down to. Those parents, I don't blame firearms. I blame those parents. Mm-hmm. I will continue to blame those parents because they shouldn't be down in, uh, in the streets in Atlanta at night past curfew hour. And uh, they need to be at home doing their homework, getting ready for school for the next day. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, But let me hit you with this one. And this is for the reverence to understand. The only thing that constitutional carry in Georgia did was oh, take no, away the fees. That. Just take, away back the fees. Up. just take the yeah. fees away. That's yeah. all it did. Because he says this stupid Revan, he's got. <laughs> <laughs> you can t- <laughs> you can have common sense legis- gun legislation. There's no such thing as common sense le- gun legislation. It's uh, every state has background checks. We have legal limits on who own guns. Mm-hmm. What are you trying to do? Is hinder common law-abiding citizens from defending themselves because of stupidity well 
if you if you read what he says, right? You cannot have common if, sense gun legislation. If the government has given, if the uh, governor, if the governor given has given us constitutional carry. carry, so right. he has a beef with Kemp. Right. He has a yeah. beef with Kemp because Kemp has allowed yeah. more people who couldn't afford to pay for the um, gun licensing in the right. state of Georgia, who now they don't have to. And, so that and, really opens the door for a whole lot of people. And I'm not just talking about black people. There's everybody. poor there's poor white folks, there's poor uh, Asians and Mexicans and right. everybody else that couldn't have, they they had 14 other things to do with that $87. Right. And now that that fee is taken off, they can go and use that they may have already had a gun, couldn't carry the gun, kept the gun at home in order to um not break the law. Not, and not break the insult so when right. they get pulled over by the law enforcement, mm -hmm. they got a gun on them, they have to worry about going to jail. Well, you know, let's be fair. I, in the no, state no. of Georgia, you can carry a gun in your car without a license. No, no, I'm talking about on their body. Right. On That's their what I'm body. Saying. What right. if they okay. had it on their body mm -hmm. and, and see and then have to worry about getting stopped be pulled Absolutely. over? Yes, they can keep it in the car, they right. can do all that. But then now they can keep it on their body concealed and right. they don't have to worry about law enforcement stopping them mm -hmm. or harassing them or trying to take them to jail for at least legally possessing the firearm right and now they're, they're I, now they're legit right they're legit i have issue with reverend jones reverend jones you are uneducated man and, and you you got some serious issues man and i wouldn't be surprised that you are getting paid by the democratic party you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and that's what i think that, that this dude is doing you know so um i mean all these guys want to sit up here and go toward the capitol or whatever i mean that's ridiculous man yeah, but you know that that is what happens when you don't fully understand what's going on, and you think you do, and you and you yeah. sound great. And this is the biggest thing that I was explaining to you before. A few customers came in, and they were totally off with this. They totally off. They just thought that it was some type of uh, free for all, and they they were they wanted to arm themselves because uh, everybody else is going to have a gun. No, 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 no. That's not the case. If you're a mm -hmm. criminal and you have a background that doesn't that doesn't allow you to have a gun, you can't. You still can't buy a gun legally. You still are not supposed to carry. We all know criminals are carrying guns. They were carrying guns before constitutional carry. They may be carrying more now because some of these jokers don't want to be left out because they want to be like normal people. They're not normal. So that's yeah. why you got to. That's why you, as a citizen, got to carry just you to really. combat them clowns. But don't you listen to me, people? If you look like us and you're black. Don't listen to these stupid dude. Um, this is you go down the article. He says, "Allow us to sit down at the table." He's talking to Kemp and bring forth some solutions with the police and this and with city officials and state officials. Reverend Jones said, "What? Yeah, what could you bring? No. What, what, no. what solution can you bring? You, can yeah. you put body armor, or could you go out and stop bullets? And when these little dudes are shooting at each other, you just go." There's, do something with your hands there's no solution there's not an epidemic it's a war zone down in, in atlanta because we don't have enough police why because we had a mayor and we that wanted to prosecute every police for doing their jobs oh and, dude you didn't go you didn't go far enough no you i didn't, didn't go, go far, far enough, enough. Didn't we're marching to the capitol to protest these idiotic gun laws the governor and the georgia legislature has thrown on us Family spokesperson James Davenport commented, these people believe that constitutional carry is the it's reason causing. why these kids are dead. Right. Even That's if he didn't, if he didn't sign it and we're still waiting on him to do something about it. Nothing. And, and so this was three to, years ago. So those they're going to do the still peaceful march on Saturday at 1 p.m. Yep. Oh, Damn. my God. I didn't get that part, bro. You know, I was so miffed at the other part. I stopped yeah. like laughing. They're clowns, at man. They're clowns. Dude. And the majority of the people going to be down there are black people. Yes. And, sitting, and, and, they're, and they're always talking about crime and stuff. But you had a governor giving you the opportunity to protect yourself because right. they know there's not enough police. But now you're saying, I want to take that right away. Yep. And I want to rely on the police yep. and what and what that and I guarantee you those those clergymen, those police, um, those uh, people in that churches was all saying, uh, get rid of the police. 
I guarantee you there was all BLM supporters and it was saying, get rid of the police, no justice, no peace, all that crap. Well, I guarantee you. When a little when a little nut job comes and sits down in the church like they had in South Carolina, they, well, they wish they had a gun at that point. Oh, I guarantee you they got guns in their church. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you they got guns, but they won't take any training because they all think they know what they're talking about. Well, some of these dudes, you know hire, with the mega churches, they hire, they have their own police force. They, no, they're they, officers they, from another place, but seriously, they got yeah. about twelve to thirteen officers at every every. They have whole damn squad at every service because they're making you know fourteen, fifteen million dollars a, a a weekend, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, so you talking about, I'm talking about those big churches. I'm not talking about these, yeah. you know, the corner store jokers. You're I'm talking, talking about, about like that. this Creflo Dollar. There you go, stuff. dollar bill, yeah. bill y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They making they making bank, man. Then people yeah. come in there. You you can't come in there unless you got a certain amount of money that you can throw on the floor. Mm-hmm. That's or what I look it. at it. Right, or I like you got. Got the Holy Ghost or whatever. Yeah, down you, the aisles. If you ain't tied in ten percent of a of a of a quarter million, you can't come in here, partner. Yeah, that's what happened to Holyfield. Look, look how broke he was. <laughs> <laughs> he could have pay his light bill. But he blessed, he bro. Good. But he blessed. He's, oh yeah, lights out. He can't even pay his light bill. <laughs> but he blessed. Okay. Then asked for some money back from the from the preacher, and he said, "Nope." Criffle of dollars and nah man, that's that's the lowest money. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn, damn. Uh, oh man. I mean that is so stupid. I man, if I had a man I would if I didn't have something else to do tomorrow, I would drive down there. If I had a megaphone, I'd be like, You guys are clown <laughs> But I know I have to end up fighting the a- Four or five black dudes down there trying you're to. You're misinformed. Me. Understand, yeah. you do not know what you're talking about. Right, <laughs> right. But they they wouldn't even listen to me. They were like, "Oh, he's fool. He's a." And the first thing they do is call your Uncle Tom. Oh, some kind of. That's name. the first thing they mm-hmm. do. Call your Uncle Tom. You sell out. Mm-hmm. You know, and yep. uh, but you you trying to sell out your own Sam self. Mm-hmm. You and know? you know, the largest percentage of new gun owners are black people. And mostly mm-hmm. black women, mostly black single women who are trying to defend themselves. Right. And this is right. this these people want to take that away and make it harder for you to go out and legally buy a firearm. We're not talking about exactly. somebody going to meet at somebody exactly. in them dark alley. Yeah, no, you know what this is, right? They mad because Stacey Abrams didn't win, bro. That's what this is. All those jack leg preachers were probably sitting out there supporting Stacey Abrams. So now they Stacey Abrams didn't win. So now they're looking to anything to go after Kemp with mm. to dirty him up. But you see what I'm saying? You, you, That's what this is. You'd have to be a fool. And I know most of the people who follow them are fools. I know some of you are going to be offended when I say that. But nonetheless. I don't um, care. Yeah, me neither. But my thing is, you have to be a fool if you listen to this and not research it yourself and find out that these ministers and their uh, representatives right. are wrong look up constitutional carry in the state and of georgia there, and, 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 and in the state of georgia mm-hmm. and look it up if you don't want to look it up and you listen to this show ask us some questions we will school you a hundred percent yep i'll do it over the phone mm-hmm. and uh um uh, just look it up we're gonna have to tape it for um content purposes but yeah but if we're right you got to quit going to that church. <laughs> you need to find a new church. Ooh. I'm telling you that right now. If we're right, you need to find a new church. And okay. We are. So, so don't challenge us. Mm-hmm. If you're going to one of these stupid churches, if you, if you don't want to lay down that challenge, that's what, the challenge. This guy? What church is he with? That's the challenge. It doesn't say Mount Zion or something like that. No, that's the say. young boy's name. Oh, Okay. Oh yeah, first icon, Iconian, Iconian. My uh, Latin's a little the, off. They're Baptist. Uh, Timothy from the first. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, yeah I, go ahead. Baptist Church. What'd you call it? I, I Iconian. Iconium Baptist yeah. Church. Yeah, see yeah. Here. You go. I get stumbled on, it and you just gonna <laughs> run through it. Okay. <laughs> well, I just I just said coin. I just took this repronounced it word differently. I don't know where. Yeah. I've never. But that's the challenge. That Anybody up. who goes to those churches and you guys support that those ministers, if you if you do that and you're going to question us on anything, our challenge to you 
if we're right and we tell you to look it up and you look it up and you read it and then you realize your minister's wrong, stop going to your church because you're a sheep, you know? Bro, the, the man is yeah. all over the place. There are the two of them. So the one dude that said you cannot have common sense gun legislation if the governor gives us constitutional carry, right? Then um, before that, the gangs are putting money in their pocket. The gangs are buying their family's Christmas gifts. The gangs are providing turkeys for Thanksgiving. If we don't have a way to put money in the pockets of these young men, we are not going to solve the problem. Reverend Timothy Donald of First Iconian, Iconium Baptist Church said. So but, my thing is... What, it, it, what, is, what does that got to do with, the, with guns? They the selling way? drugs. Where do you think they're getting the money from? <laughs> but, they're but, not selling but guns. How are you going to supplement... Where are you getting the money from to give to these kids? Well, he can take it out of his salary where every time he take all that pool pit money and give it to the kids. So I guarantee you he ain't. I guarantee you he's got a brand new house. He's got a $3,000 suit. I guarantee you he's got a nice latest model car. You know? Bro, he's got the money. You, we're talking about a 12-year-old and 15-year-old. What yeah. do they need money for again? Like a 12 I understand year old what and a you're saying, but if he wanted to help these kids, but he said we got to put money. We have we have to find they a way to put money. money in the pocket they have of these the young men. Take the money out to church. Oh, give you up your so salary. You want, you want the church to be a communist church? No. Tell that minister to give up his salary. Give up your salary and give it to the community like you're supposed He'd to. He'd shoot one of those kids for the money he's getting from <laughs> <in> that church. <laughs> Like I said, he's probably living in a bigger house than you and I. He's probably got servants. He's probably Combined. wearing he's probably wearing three thousand dollar suits oh, every Sunday. It. And he's probably got a latest brand new car this year model he's driving. I don't I, I don't, guarantee I, you. I, I guarantee Amen. Hey hey man. Pimping ain't easy. No. Somebody gotta easy. do it. Yeah. I mean these guys are so full of it, man. You know? Mm -hmm. Straight up full of it. Somebody got to do it, bro. Now, um, speaking of that, while we, we're sitting up here talking about gun control, a lot of you guys don't realize we got these silly, silly um, FedEx and UPS is still going after gun, gun stores. Mm -hmm. So now FedEx and UPS, uh, what they're trying to do now is... Um, making gun stores uh, uh, get three different accounts with them. So if you, uh, when they mailing, instead of one different item that, you know, they can mail components in, the three different accounts gonna be one, one for um, uh, gun parts, one for accessories, and one for the gun. Now the reason they're doing this is because they can actually come up with a database on how many guns are going to where and to whom. And so, but see now, if the guns are in just in the box, they don't know what's in the box unless they open the box, and it's illegal for them to open the box and or X-ray it. So now they can do this and start their own database and say, okay, he's got a gun, he's got a gun, and they can take that information and give it up to the ATF without even the ATF asking for the information for a warrant. So what they're doing is creating a database of gun owners and uh, gun suppliers. You ain't got to worry about the credit card company doing it. These two clowns are doing it. Right. And uh, it's, it's ridiculous. So uh, my philosophy is how to get around that is buy your guns locally, you know, and uh, uh, don't try to um, order anything online to – well, if you order it online anyway, it goes to an FFL. But see, when the FFL does the uh, transfer, that's how they go, they're going to receive it with the transfer. And then you do a 4473 and you pick up the firearm from them. So either way it goes, you got to pick up, do a 4473. Right. But the so, thing is that they're, they're hounding the FFL and the actual um, To give store. up that, that name, who that right. firearm is going to. Right. That's, That's basically what, they what they're saying. That's what, who they hound it. Mm -hmm. who, yeah. And so it's, it'll come down to when that firearms received, they also put your name in who is received for on that receiver. So they know if you if I order a firearm from, uh, let's say, another state and it comes in to the, my local store, when they transfer it in, they're going to they're gonna write my name down who was the receipt that firearms for 
That's when I bought it out of state or from another facility. But you see, there's people out there that believe that that's okay. No, but the it's government not okay. should know. The government should know that. Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. the government will know so much, and next thing you know, they're come stamping out. Prime example: Look what we're going through with the braces. Now, the mm -hmm. ATF is supposed to make a um, a ruling, a ruling on AT, um, braces supposed to be at the end of this month, mm -hmm. uh, just in time for the new Congress. Of course, so, yeah. And uh, so, if you let's say the, with the new braces, they're going to outlaw them and say it's an NFA item, so you have to do a tax stamp. And so, uh, by doing so. Um, you have to take a picture of your fire, uh, your AR with the brace on it. You have to submit the serial number of the AR and pay two hundred dollars. And they're going to waive the two hundred dollars. They'll waive it, right? They'll waive the two hundred dollars, and you'll turn it in. Now you just put yourself on the ATF database. Now they know who has braces <laughs> because mm -hmm. a brace is a non-serial number item. Now, when the ATF now remember, ATF came out with braces and said you could have them before. Right. And they're totally illegal. Just don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Then it was like, okay, you can do all that stuff before disregard everything we said. You can still own them. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, they're trying to say a brace enhances the firearm and makes it more dangerous. And what you don't, because no mass shooting was done with a brace. And so um, when when they come wait down till next a, week, yeah. But when they yeah, wait till next week. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna have a brace, bump stock, all kinds of stuff. Watch exactly. And uh, and uh, so when it comes down to it, once they get your eight million people who bought these braces to register, they're gonna say we got them. Now they're gonna come back and say in the ruling, they're gonna say, well, uh, now braces are a felony; they're outlawed. And uh, if you don't uh, turn them in, and uh, we know who's got them. We're coming to get them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they don't. And you guys are going to say, "Okay, I just give up the brace. It's not a big deal. I'll just put it in a box and mail it in." And they're going to they're going to write you back and say, "No, we want the whole serial number mm -hmm. item, exactly the rifle, because that's a part of the brace now. Because you just registered as a part of the brace. Mm -hmm. so you're going to lose your whole gun. Yep. You know what I'm saying?" That's what this uh, is all about, is creating this database to get you guys to do that. And if you guys fall for it, you're stupid. We're telling everybody, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And uh, But if you own a brace, you'll be subject to a felon. My philosophy is a non-serial number item. How are they going to know? Unless right. you're taking pictures and showing it. Mm -hmm. you know what but I'm that's saying? what they're, they're, going to, they're going to play off the goodwill of honest people. Right. Again. The mm -hmm. goodwill of honest law-abiding citizens. Yep. The crooks ain't turning nothing in. They're gonna be mm -hmm. out there with all types of braces. And then you're yeah. gonna have those people in the middle are gonna have to make a decision: Do I mm -hmm. tell them to have it, or do I not tell them? Do I just yeah. bury this in the ba in the basement somewhere, or bury it in, in the backyard? Never take it out. Take the brace off. Put a stock on. But none of their business if you have a brace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, if you put a stock on that, you got a short barrel rifle, and you have to go ahead and NFA that anyway. Change out the upper receiver. See, that's why 16 inches is just fine, man. Change out the upper receiver. And 16, use all these 11 and 5 yeah. inch half use a it, rifle. Use it, as a, use it as a breakdown rifle. You can put a collapsible stock on there. You can do all types of stuff to get around it. Mm -hmm. Remember, you can. Yeah. You know. There's, a, there's a, what is it, 26, 26 mm -hmm. inches total or something like that? That's right. 26 inches total. Erect it. Yep. That's how you can get around it. So and uh, uh, or you can take the brace off itself and just have the regular soft foam part on there and it still be a pistol. You know what I'm saying? Right. So so there's s several things you can do. You can put that um, um not a suppressor. What's that? They have these long. Um, yeah, the uh, I thought it's, it's like yeah, compensators uh, and compensator on there that goes past. The yeah, two, and it gives you, gives you that distance. It's almost right. like like four or, inches. Like I said, let's take the brace off. Yeah, and let's shoot it like like you, you know, like you're shooting it with a pistol. Remember, you can still put that bump stop, that the uh, buffer tube up to your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they haven't they haven't it's, outlawed that yet. They haven't outlawed that yet. So, 
it's really not a problem. Right. You know? But you can't have a, foam. you can't have a vertical um stock on it, a vertical foregrip. It has to be mm. angled. No vertical it gets forty five degree foregrip. Like, yeah. Cool. Just put some foam on there, cheek rest. You believe me, they these cats are gonna make up something. Mm-hmm. They're gonna come up with something. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And they're gonna put it on the market and everybody gonna buy it and they're gonna sell it and they're gonna be like, ah, screw you again, ATF. Yep. Take it back. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> then ATF yeah. was like, now you need to register your foam cover on your buffer tube. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Take a picture of it and we'll waive the $200 fee. Yeah. Mm-mm. Don't do it. Do not comply at all. You know, and you guys are taking all these pictures of these braces and putting them on the internet and all that stuff. I saw a stupid dude uh, doing that with a switch. And he was a uh, well-known YouTuber, and he was actually had a switch on his on his Glock shooting it. And I was like, "What are you doing, man?" You know, and uh, but stuff like that, you just got to stop doing that kind of stuff. Stop yeah, showing. Yeah, everybody that wants stuff. to be cool. Everybody wants to be yeah. down. And stop self snitching. You know, unless you're in some type of team movement and you're really doing a job, not just fucking around at the range. Full auto is useless. Yeah, especially on a pistol. Because yeah. most of you guys don't even know how to, how to hold it or how to aim it. And you end up, you pull the trigger and it's gone within a millisecond. And uh, you just missed all your shots. But you shot everybody else, what you were shooting at. You know, so and I, don't and do I, it. I have to hold it in sometimes because I know I'm I'm naturally at this age a, a curmudgeon. But at the same time, I, I you know, it's to give them their chance. I came through it. I shot, you know, full auto. And it was great. You, you look forward to it. And but once you do it and you put it in a practical sense, you got to come to a realization. It's worthless. Well, unless you're fighting a hundred people, man. I'm talking about for. I see the guys in the in the um the, the uh, ghetto dudes with the they they made them or they what's it called when you do the little thing in the like machine you got the 3D printer and they stick uh-huh. it on the back and they go out somewhere and you can see it's in the ghetto it's all burnt out and broken windows and then they just let up a whole magazine. <laughs> what the hell did you just do? Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't fun. Uh, yeah, I fired a lot of automatic weapons. Mm-hmm. I fired M16, A1, that was fully automatic. A2, A3, three round bursts. Uh, 50 cal, M60, grease guns, fired also uh, 240s. Um, those are all machine guns. Mm-hmm. And so. Well, I, I only I, f- I fired submachine guns and it's MP5, Tommy guns. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, M16s, yeah. M4. But so we've, um, we've done all that stuff. Yeah. And, and that's what I said. I, I know it, is, it sounds like, oh, you know, let, it, let, let them have their, their turn, let them have their shine. You know, yeah, go ahead. But, you know, when you see people breaking the law to fire full automatic mm-hmm. and right. they don't know any better, they don't have a mentor. We always talk about having a gun mentor. You need a mentor. Yeah. There's somebody to tell you, all right, go have your jollies, get it out, get it out, and be don't done. Don't videotape it. Right, don't that videotape too. it, don't that show too. it. Yeah, not unless it's at a legal range mm-hmm. that that range authorizes you to use their gear to you can go to some ranges and rent their machine guns and shoot them and stuff yeah if you do that yeah you can videotape that stuff but your own personal stuff don't 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 put that stuff out there man because your neighbors see it your friends see it and when the law comes down to it I remember he had a video on on it it went viral and he had a video of him shooting his other gun and he put the gun in the basement and he lives at 1236 Mockenberg Lane (laughs) Right. They're going to mm-hmm. tell on you, man. They yeah. will tell on you. They, these people have no conscience about snitching on you guys. Because Especially they when they think they're right. Envious. Yeah. They, they're going to just hate you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and that's, that, that's the thing that, you know, for me, uh, when I look at it, is I, I try to remind myself, you know, let this person do their thing. You know? But when I see the ghetto ones with the, the little little plastic thing in the back, they were trying to sell those back in the in 2000s. I remember those mm-hmm. back in the 2000s. And it was well, like, the ATF got involved, right? And it was a, it was called the what do they call it now? They call it a switch. Yeah, they come from was, China. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. And then um, back then, it was all they're doing is interrupting the sear. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. just and it's, what you you whatever you have in the magazine, that's a, it's going to fire. There's no way right. to control that. Yeah, yeah. You can't Most ranges, a lot of ranges have that. Uh, they're class three ranges. Mm-hmm. They will have a switch on a Glock, so you can go in there and test fire it and. 
majority of people shoot up the ceiling because mm-hmm. they don't they yeah. don't know like you said they don't know how to handle it, it no. it's a certain way that you have to shoot full automatic guns yeah whether it's shoulder mounted or a pistol there's a certain yeah. way that you have to hold it um if you hold it the normal way that you think that you were shooting one round you're, you're shoot not the doing it right yeah you're gonna shoot the ceiling mm-hmm. i've seen it done i've seen it done by hardcore shooters shoot Bro, the ceiling. we got people shooting the ceilings in single in uh, semi-automatic you know damn yeah. they shooting the ceiling with full auto yeah yeah it's I went to the place um, up. what's the range over here. I went to a range over in Covington. Shots fired, dude. I hadn't been there in years. I went there probably like 2012, 13. It's a nice little. It's a nice spot, small, but it's a nice, you know, nice range. I think they have uh, about ten lanes. <sighs> Ceiling's all shot up, bro. The Walls ceiling, the wall, up. the floor. And the guy, yep. and you know, one of the guys that I know, and I was just chit chatting with him, and he was like, "Yeah, you ain't been here in a while." And I said, "No, way. I'm looking, and I'm on the outside looking <laughs> through the window, like, what the hell?" He said, "Yeah, man, they had they had to cut ladies' night out because they were shooting on the ceiling." And mind you, I love ladies. I'm not being disrespectful at all. I'm gonna put my Barry White voice on. I love ladies. Yeah, one of them. I saw the lady of a 45, 1911 pointing in my face from the ladies. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna tell you. Dude, the lady he said there were, there were ladies coming in, and they don't do like a class or anything like that before they get started. They just give you the gear and let them go. He said they had ladies that came in holding the gun in an upward position, pulling the trigger oh, here, then pulling God. the trigger here, then pulling the trigger here. And he said at that point they had to stop. Um, I don't blame them. It was free, and yeah. I told him I said, "Well, you know what they say about free? It's not always good. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely not good for you." Right. Damn. Damn. Yep. Yeah, there's somebody was gonna die. It was hey. just a matter of time. I think uh uh our local store around me did the same thing. They cut out ladies' night. Mm-hmm. I think all of them cut out ladies' night. It, it, Every single range has cut it's out. It's a good draw on mm-hmm. a slow night. Yeah. You know, like a Tuesday, Wednesday, mid midweek. Because they buy ammunition. Right. All they have to do is buy the ammunition and some targets. And if mm-hmm. the admission is free and the lane fee is free, sometimes they even give them the eyes and ears. But mm-hmm. what happens when you get so much damage that you have to replace parts and replace bafflings in the ceiling? It's not cost effective. It's not. No. Yeah. No range no. has lady nights anymore. Yeah. I've noticed that. All this well, on. the one that um, Armchar, you know where that one is. Armchar, yeah. they got uh, the dudes from, um, what's it called? Double Tap? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the guys that are out of South River, the, the, um, the I think Double Tap Coalition, they they actually do uh, training on Tuesday night for ladies for during the free free ladies night. Mm, so that's okay. a pretty good dick. I don't know if, how much they, yeah. if they're getting paid or if they're paying the ladies or they're just doing that. Oh, they're rides. probably getting a box of ammunition or something. Well, the, I can't tell you. the, the range, dude, I'm sure they're giving them something. But yeah, they're, 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 they're actually going and do I, I saw a couple of their um, flyers. Yeah. They're actually down there for that ladies' night, and that's probably what, what, based on what you just said, what to saving grace for it is that they got somebody in there that knows what they're doing to say, hey, you yeah. can't do that. This is the way we do it. Yada yada yada. Yeah, well, you know, because yeah. even that place, they do a um, down at Armchair, they do a, uh, a safety briefing when you go in, no matter who you are. You got to uh-huh. sit and take, I think it's like a 15 to 20 minute class. And after they do the class, they basically show you how to run the range and work the little electronics and all that stuff and where not to shoot. And then after that, you for the whole year, you can come back and um, you don't have to take the class no more. Oh, that's every range. No, yeah. the, the, um, what you gonna call it? I went out in Covington, they didn't do that. When I went in there, I was looking around. They don't do that. They just mm. ask you not to shoot the ceiling. If you still mm. do it, they just ask you to leave. Every range I've been to, usually the first time I go to that range, even when I used to shoot competition, mm-hmm. if it was the first time I went to that range, even to shoot a competition match, I had to go and watch their safety briefing. That's good, though. I think yeah. it's a good idea. So I didn't have a problem. I said, okay, mm-hmm. well, let's do that. We're good, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, When that electronic thing came out where you, some of the ones that you can have it turn and face you and run up and down, I don't yeah. fucking want that shit. I worked the one that you would go back and forward, back and forward. This other one now, these new one, you can have a spin, stop, thirty seconds. Man, it, I, yeah. I didn't mind taking that class. When I used to run a match, man, I used to have, I used to use those 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 uh, movers. Mm-hmm. I used to have those runners coming up. I used to have them coming up on a guy and they'll turn and they'll and then they and then they come back on them, then go back. At a fast mm-hmm. speed. I mean, we used to do some tricked out stuff, dude. Dude, that, that, when you 
do that in front of the box is good mm -hmm. time. It's a good time. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, they used to have to do that. They used to have to hit that runner before they hit the rest of the course. So the runner come up, present itself, not present itself, then go back. Then they had hit. And sometime I will put two targets up on it. So you had to hit both of them before it got to a certain distance. Right. And the way I did it is you'll be shooting through a window. So if it got too close, you can get out window. of view. Yeah. yeah. You couldn't see anything. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So you had to you had to draw and hit them while it was coming quick you know in uh in order to get them oh man we used to have some fun man that was a lot of work though but it was a lot of fun though once it was done you know what i'm saying right i don't miss setting that up at all <laughs> 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 i set it up and then I, I used to design set up then and uh they used to tear down i was too tired man and run the show i used to run the match you know what i'm saying right and Safety shooting and, it. and shooting yeah and still coming in the top five, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I was like, "What the hell?" That was some shooting back then. Mm -hmm. Then go to work, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> amped up, <laughs> right? Hyped, hyped, man. Those were some fun days. Yeah, yeah, but I don't miss it. That was a lot of work, bro. Coming up with stages and stuff. Mm -mm. I know people don't understand that. Um, when I first started as a um, range director that's what a uh, match director should i say that's what the same thing coming up with the stages then mm -hmm. when you get help it, it, it's great right you know you know you're trying to bring everything together but at the same time you got people having different ideas and then you got to bring that into something that's kind of competitive but not I over the reach of everybody I else listen. i didn't listen to nobody that's your I problem bro that's, I, that's I, your problem. I made all the stages and if you didn't like them, F you. See, you know that's, what I'm that's your problem, man. Once a month, we had a no light shoot. Mm -hmm. Once a month, we had a night shoot. Once a, and that, uh, once a month, we also had... So explain uh, the difference between low light and night. Okay. Uh, low light, you was allowed to use a flashlight and uh, or some type of lighting device on not uh, mounted on your firearm, but in your hand in your non-firing hand or you can hold it in your mouth it doesn't matter but um, you was able to um, move illuminate the target and engage then go to different targets and I always had is always we're going to be nine targets somewhere in there you know what i'm saying right and there's going to be a lot of movement then we would do a no light where you would be at seven yards we uh, turn all the lights out, then we do one at a time, and you draw and shoot six rounds into a target at seven yards with no light. Then we turn the light back on, we score. Damn. And then um, you'd be surprised how good you got after you progressed through this. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm then once a month, I used to do the 25-yard shot. We would do 25 yards, and you had to put six rounds into one target at 25 yards. We did all that. That was a requirement for all three once a month. Low light, no light, and the 25 yards. Every month, that had to be in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. And people got good at it. You know, you saw their progression on the no light and the, and the low light. They got better. They got better. Then also the 25 yards. A lot of people hated me when I first started doing it, but then they start – getting round all six rounds into the eight inch circle and then it started realizing mm -hmm. hmm, now i see why he's doing this you know right. what i'm saying yeah because i kept telling him your greatest um you're more effective at distance than you are being close that is your advantage distance you know right yeah i mean it's a gun not a knife that's right yeah that's right why you yeah. wanna be? A, why you wanna be standing on top of the dude breathing the same air he's breathing? Exactly. You know, because you got bad air in China, and the China bad air is coming to America, yeah. and then we got to get the good air back from China. Right. So get away from him. Get some distance. I, I heard what you said. I didn't make any damn sense. But I heard what you said. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, <laughs> you guys are watching the show. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And and uh, we'll see you guys. We're and uh, 
Um, happy holidays. You guys on the range and happy holidays. We got more to come. Yeah, we'll see All you right? before then. See you on the range, guys. See you on the range.